Okay, thanks a lot. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, I'm very grateful to having the opportunity to speak here because I come, as Donatella was telling you, I come more from the e-infrastructure side. And it's, uh, it's really nice to see the difference now because I see you as more from the soft side. On the e-infrastructure side, we put the computers into the church like in Barcelona you put the people into the church. So I think this reflects a bit perhaps, I wouldn't generalize too much, but it could reflect a bit about the different views of e-infrastructure people and, and the more uh, human-driven forces on, on, on your side. But anyway, there, there's a couple of messages I, I think I, I would like, if you just remember two things after my presentations, I would be very grateful if you would first remember that uh, I'm stressing you now a bit because I'm introducing some more acronyms and, and we all are suffering with those. But if uh, you think as i as one of the possibilities for collaboration over a broad range of different things in, in the e-infrastructure side. And inside i we have partners already which are also in the open air. So there exists already the interaction and I would like to see a lot more in the i field coming in. This is the first message. The other thing, uh, if you remember after my presentation, is the RDA as such, which will provide new ways of uh, collaboration and promoting the usage and uh, interoperability of data globally, which is, I'm sure, one of your key issues as well. How do scientists use the data globally? The reason why RDA or i exists today is pretty much from the fact that we believe that the scientists and the researchers themselves really have the power to do things. This is nothing which is controlled from top down. We really believe that this is a process where the scientists from the bottom up really are steering the process. And there are a few good examples. I don't have the time to go into much details about, but we have on, on the protein data bank side where scientists started to collect three-dimensional structures or proteins and suddenly the database became such valuable that they really had to do this in, in a reliable and sustainable way. But everything was driven from the science or the researcher side. This is not something which was imposed from above. Uh, there are, on more on the computer side, we have the M MPI forum. We had suddenly a lot of, of computers having lots of processors. And the scientists come together and decided how these machines should be programmed. Of course, uh, a good example is also the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, at the beginning there was just a group of people coming together and agreeing on standards and protocols. Today we are using mails and, and their various kinds of, of applications, but it would not have been possible if these people would not have come together and discussed this. And we feel pretty much on the data field being in the same situation now. The scientists, researchers should come together. They should agree about standards, how to do it and things rather quickly. I will come into more detail about this, but rather quickly, not in a seven years time frame, but in a shorter time frame, in the same way as these examples I have on the slide. The i which in a way started the process, uh, it, it has two goals. The first goal is to support the creation of the Research Data Alliance. And I have some more slides about that. And the other goal is to support the work of, of, uh, of European research community to work in the first place between Europe and US, but globally is, is the, uh, the long-term goal of it. 
just a boring slide about the facts about the i chord it's it's very very small compared of course to to the open air but i think we we have a lot of of good momentum it's a 24 months pro, uh, project as well so we are really aiming at something short term results and uh, it, it's about a 3.3 million uh, euro project but uh, if you look at the bottom of the slide, you, you see the, that i -Cordy is trying to build or is establishing something which we call a, call a coordinated platform. And with the coordinated platform, we mean three different things in this context. We have an analysis program which goes into details uh, about the data exchange. We have a prototype program, and we have now collaboration also on to the open air side here. And we have a workshop program. We think that we have to promote the young scientists to be involved as well. We are all struggling with the fact that we don't get educated data practitioners enough. What should we do to get these data practitioners? Because we can solve all the legal aspects, but if we don't have these people who are trained in doing this stuff, we, we, we just will fail. So we are also promoting young scientists to get more involved into this. Uh, from this slide, I think I introduced first time something which we called the high-level strategic, for, strategic forum. In, in Europe. We, we are also in a way lacking a platform, if I may use that, in Europe which, uh, which could act as uh, a recommendation body. It could uh, speak to various uh, players in the field and, and so forth. So w we are also looking into creating something which, uh, I'm not looking at a legal body, but something which could unite different projects and different efforts under one umbrella. The, we have, of course, an, an, a website, and I, I really recommend or suggest you to go to the iCordy website and, and register, and then you will get all the information. This is a fairly new project, so we haven't gone worked for more than a few months, but uh, I'm sure there will be much more stuff to come. And uh, we, we have a lot of partners, and this, I'm just showing quickly the logo so you can recognize uh, some of the persons in, in the room here if you want to contact them as well to ask. A few more words, and I'm sure Donatella will, will also go into this, is the Research Data Alliance, which is, uh, it is interesting and it's challenging. I will just briefly take you to the, I, I think the history is quite short, in fact. The, I'm sure the ideas have been floating around much longer than, than this, but uh, things have really moved uh, during 2011 and 2012. And I want to emphasize this as well because this is something which has been discussed between EU.DAT and Open Air. So this is something this community has been reflecting uh, of. Uh, already. Unfortunately, the discussions didn't really go in the direction that it would have been a united efforts in the beginning. I think we are coming back again to it, but it, it wasn't really. Uh, the, the beginning was to be a united, but the outcome was not, but now we are converging again. It also reflects uh, that things can happen simultaneously in different parts of the globe. I, in Europe, we were uh, thinking and planning things and realized that the Americans had also, was also doing pretty much the same things. And then we realized that we really had to unite the effort. The Americans were talking about the Data Web Forum and we in Europe talked about the Data Access and Interoperability Task Force. But anyway, we were talking about the same things, so we brought the things together and we got a very, very strong push from NSF in the state and the European Commission in, in, in Europe and the Australians. And, and we, we realized really that there's a lot of things we could do together. And we have been working quite a lot in, 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 uh, in, uh, in this uh, path already. We had a big meeting in, in Washington, what, first to, to the 3rd of October, where we were really testing the first time how these things could globally work. 
We had a, a conference of the EU that had a conference in, in Barcelona a few weeks ago where we had a lot of, of the RDA stuff again and a lot of scientists and researchers and we were looking at how, how the things could be implemented. And the sort of a big event in, in the RDA field will be the 18th to 20th March 2013 when there is the big launch uh, conference in Gothenburg. And I really uh, encourage and wish that I see a lot of, of, uh, of open-air people as coming to, to that event. Just a few words about uh, the uh, Research Data Alliance. As I have been speaking all the time, it's, uh, it, there are some specific things we are aiming at, like short-term efforts to accelerate the sharing of, of, of an exchange of research data. It's, it's really a short-term term things, like uh, the uh, Internet Engineering Task Force started in the beginning. Uh, there are some outcomes from, from this, like adapti adapted standards, deployed infrastructure, adapted policy, which we just had a long session and implemented best practices. I think all these things need to be in place to, to succeed. In the vision and purpose statement of, of RDA, we, are, we have the goal is, of course, that the researchers around the world can share and use research data without barriers. And research data is now any data a scientist or researcher needs for his or her work. And the purpose of the RDA is, is, is data-driven innovation, discovery, sharing, and exchange, use, reuse, and standard harmonization, and discoverability. Pretty much the same things we, uh, you are working with. So I see a lot of, of commonalities. The, uh, I think I'm soon running out of time, so I should uh, perhaps starting to converge to, to the end. And that's why I'm skipping that slide. And if you look at the part of, part of the RDA, we have structured it like in four different chunks. And we are now in the third when we are in the pre-launch uh, time where we are creating a lot of, of, uh, of things to formalize the RDA as an organization. And the March 2013 will be the fourth part in this when we think that the things have been formalized enough to uh, you might ask who are the persons involved so far and uh, the active persons have been so far from the United States, Europe and Australia. And there is a, a steering group with the names Ross Wilkinson and Andrew Trelloar from, uh, from Australia, John Wood, myself, Peter Wittenberg and Juan Bicare from uh, Europe and Fran Berman and Beth Plail from uh, the United States. So the, the, this steering group is still working on, on, on building up. And we have the first three members in the RDA Council now uh, nominated by NSF and the European uh, Commission and the uh, Ministry in Australia with John Wood, Rod, Ros, uh, Ross Wilkinson and Fran Berman. You can participate into this work by through the working groups. The working groups is the essential now in the RDA. It's not an administrative exercise. It's the working groups that really produce this outcome. And it's possible today already, you can join the, uh, the discussion forum where there are several different candidates working groups now working to put up an official working group and you can provide, of course, uh, feedback already through the mailing list or the contacts, and then you can come to the March meeting. And I think I skip that by showing you as the last slide some of the work which is now going on in the RDA discussion forum to create working groups. The working groups will then be uh, uh, put in place by the RDA council. This is pre, this is as we call it, uh, it's a candidates working group and they are working on, on different uh, uh, subjects in the field and you can see that there are lots of commonalities between things which you are doing as well. So I really encourage you to, to join the effort as well and I'm sure Donatella gives some more hooks into how this can be done. Thank you.